Hi, welcome to Design Spark and another ASI expert. Today we're joined by Microchip and we have Mark Smith from Microchip. Hi, Mark. Do you want to say hello to Design Spark? Hello, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about inductive sensors. Um, Mark, could you just give me an idea about Microchip's inductive sensor range? Right. And so, you know, inductive, and I, I like to call them inductive position sensors because they're measuring position. Uh, they they measure angular position. These are sensor uh, ICs that uh, ang measure angular position and linear positions and all different types of speeds. And I like to, you know, compare them to human interface or power assist type of speeds all the way up to uh, power, you know, motor control type speeds, you know, high speed motor controls. So. Great. So just if we look at the inductive sensors and inductive position sensors, can you just tell me how they're, they're different to Hall effect sensors? Right. And, and it's, uh, you know, they're both magnetic based solutions. But if you look at a Hall effect sensor, it's using a magnet. Um, in fact, I got a magnet right here, like a, a magnet like this. And then the IC itself is close by and then it's measuring the, the change in that magnetic string from this DC magnetic yeah. field. Um, inductive position sensors go about a different way. Um, it's using it gets rid of the magnet altogether. In fact, here's a here's an inductive position sensor, a linear sensor right here. And what it's done is it's replaced that piece of magnet with a piece of metal. Um, and that right. metal will, you know, that metal actually will disturb a magnetic field that we are creating. So a primary of a transformer generates a magnetic field and we have a couple of receive coils and this piece of metal gets placed in that field and it creates a disturbance. And then we have two receive coils that are looking at um, the, and we look at the ratio of those of the receive coils, and that is a one-to-one -one relationship with the position of this target. So that's that's the biggest difference is that we get rid of the magnets, and instead um, we put the trace. The sensor itself is on a PCB board, and um, we have a piece of metal that is our target. Okay, so what what are the actual advantages of, of using maybe inductive over Hall effect? Right. I mean, the one the, one of the biggest advantages is that our dependence on temperature. I mean, if you look at a magnet like, like this, as we go over temperature, it's it's magnetic strength will change quite a bit, uh, 10, 15, 20 percent or so or more, maybe um, in our algorithm. In this algorithm, it's at a first order, it's independent of temperature. As a result, the accuracy of these things of our inductive position sensors are very good especially over temperature. Um, the other one is, is in the environments that we work with or in environments is that we're immune to stray magnetic fields. Um, and, you know, we are, I mean, I'll go into the, the biggest difference on that is that um, we are using active rejection of external magnetic fields. Um, we generate right. a magnetic field, it's generated, but it's at a given frequency and we can reject other fields that are outside of the frequency that we're interested in. Hall effect sensors aren't able to do that. I mean, you are measuring a movement and that magnetic field will change of speed, but how do you know it's the speed of the device, you're, the target, or some other stray field that is in right. at the same speed? Um, and so um, that's one of the advantages. And of course, if you look at from a cost point of view, we don't get we don't have the magnet there, so we don't have to worry about that from a pricing point of view. Um, we're replacing it with traces on a PCB board. Like I said, the sensor is the trace is on the PCB board, um, you know, and the IC is 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 interpreting that and calculating that and getting the output position. So those are the I think the big the big differences um, and and benefits over Hall effect sensor devices. Okay, so. We are seeing a lot more of the uh, inductive position sensors being used a lot more with the electric vehicles. Why is this? Is it down to the magnetism uh, principle that you were talking about there? You know, I think the biggest uh, impact is that electric vehicles have a lot more stray magnetic fields. I mean, as we talked about before, I mean, if you look at the main, the internal combustion engines replaced with the main e-motor, we call it the e-motor, electric motor, but there's actually all those hydraulic systems that used to be in the cars are now being transitioned over into electric. Um, and so this, this tells me that you have an environment now that has orders of magnitude 
of magnetic stray magnetic fields due to these motors and they're efficient mm -hmm. and and they're doing a good job but when you have a hall effect sensor in there it has to be shielded it has to be positioned in a way that will uh, be immune to those inductive position sensors is completely immune to it um, we can be we can be right next to the motor we can be inside the motor and as those fields are moving around we don't our uh, sensor does not have an impact on it the other area is that you know you have currents that are high currents that are flowing inside these cars going from the you know the the motor all the way from the battery all the way to the motor and vice versa if it's in a charging configuration and those currents if you place a, a sensor nearby they also have uh, magnetic fields that are being generated so these are different areas yeah. inside a car that's happening and, and and showing the advantages of inductive in this environment uh, but you know we also have the accuracy environment over temperature if you want to measure stuff that is inside uh, maybe a, a transmission or in a high temperature environment, you know, maybe your your barbecue grill outside if, if it's an industrial application and you need to measure that you measure uh, position and those positions um, were not affected um, by that because, as we mentioned before, at a first order that that algorithm is independent of temperature. So. What we're seeing with inductive sensors then is, is efficiency of operation plus efficiency of design. Is that correct? That's right. I mean, uh, because we are, because these things are immune to stray magnetic fields and are accurate, you can put them in, in really unique locations. So as I talked about before, instead of having uh, to put like a sensor outside the motor far enough away that it's not immune to stray, it's not being affected by the motor, you could actually put the sensor inside the motor or right up against it. Um, as things get smaller and smaller, you can put it, you know, where you need that sensor to be placed um, because of its immunity to these uh, electric field uh, variations. Or um, not only can we do, and I'll, I'll talk about it, we have the types of uh, types of sensors um, kind of, we're very flexible in the shape of the sensor too. I mean, the generic shapes are, you know, a straight line, a linear type sensor solution like this. But then on a rotary type solution, we could put a sensor at an end of shaft. Like if you're measuring a motor, you can put it at the end of the shaft, but maybe you could put it as a through hole shaft. So you, the sensor goes around yeah. the shaft. Or um, another approach is an arc sensor on the side of the shaft. And so these really help to kind of broaden um, the your your possibilities of where to place the sensor so that you can simplify your designs moving forward okay so engineers they, they love to have uh, evaluation tools and, and uh, just resource to go to so what is it that microchip can help design engineers with in terms of evaluation tools and maybe programming yeah and so we we have a, a number of different flows for you um, if you're your one of your do-it-yourself type types you want to look at, hey, what does that sensor actually look like? You can download one of the sensors right from our website. We have about seven or eight that are predefined for you. Um, and, and you can download them, get an IC, one of our ICs. And it's almost a plug, it's a plug and play type solution for you. We also have quite a few selection of kits and evaluation boards to help you get into the technology. This right here is, is one example of a what we call our nano kits because it's so small you just plug this right into your computer and you can start up our software and it will recognize this um, this is a linear board we also have a, a nano kit for a rotary board this has our ic on it that detects the sensor but it also has a, a microcontroller this is a pic 18f microcontroller that's just communicating and and doing the things that it will help you to evaluate um, the solution we also have and that's a nano kit. We have our pro kits, which includes a, a programmer and um, an evaluation board. And that programmer does a little bit more, has, has really fully encompasses all the features of the, of the IC. So you can explore and customize um, the, the IC's configuration for your, for your solution. And then we have some other ones like Clickboard. We call them uh, evaluation boards with the micro eBus. And um, this is mm -hmm. quite interesting. Um, you could just, here's a, a rotary board that just plugged in. It has a bus structure. You can plug it into certain types of evaluation boards that have the micro E um, type solution here. And this is, it's plugging in right into a curiosity board 
Um, and, and that really helps you to provide, you know, kind of rapid prototyping. Let's get my code to work with the central. How do I interface it with it? These are, you know, helping to speed up your time to market there. Um, I, I want to point out our software, our IPC software. We call it Integrated Programming and Calibration Environment. Mm -hmm. And that software is, is really designed so that you can explore the IC, explore the features of the IC, um, and may, maybe not even read the data sheet. That's my the ultimate goal is not even have to read that yeah. data sheet. Um, and it steps you through it. You can change the configuration. You can measure sensors. So it's great for a sensor evaluation. You can analyze sensors um, to look at um, the signals coming in. You can also go into a debug mode where you're looking mm -hmm. at the insides of the chip and really get into the technology. Um, so you're really understanding it. And, and you're at the end, you're developing a robust, accurate uh, position sensor for your application. That sounds great. We'll, and we'll put some links, obviously, to, to those various areas from, from your website as, as well. Just before we finish, uh, Mark, I just want to ask, are you seeing any other trends? We talked about you know automotive, but are there any other trends that are happening in the world of sensors that you, you would like to comment on? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll focus on, you know, I think that shrinking of, you know, miniaturization um, uh, of devices is one area that is, you know, being able to, is, is really, of course, always there. I mean, people are always looking at how to save space. Um, yeah. It fits in automotive. It fits in other types of industrial applications. That's one. Um, you know, this technology that we're doing here really opens up um, the use of of linear types of movements um, quite substantially. I showed you right here that this sensor right here is, you know, a linear um, movement. This is a 50 millimeter linear sensor, but we can, we've designed these sensors as small as three or four millimeters or as large right. as 600 millimeters. So it kind of opens up uh, the design for, you know, accurate linear movements um, in an inexpensive, scalable type of option. And we're seeing those, that those types of, of applications um, pop up, you know, whether it's a control, um, a very robust control for some sort of industrial uh, piece of equipment, or maybe you're a music mixer. Um, these are areas yeah. where you, you, you need something robust and something that can slide and, and do that way. Um, yeah. And then um, the other area is that, as I kind of talked about, is motor control, Specifically, electric vehicles is a big driver for it, but really anywhere there's a motor control where you need precise um, measurement of the rotor, both at idle speeds all the way up to high speed. Um, and the advantage mm -hmm. of idle speeds for a car, it's needed because you need to worry about their safety concerns, about knowing exactly where that rotor is at all positions. But then when you put your foot on the accelerator or you want to start that motor up very, very quickly, um, you want to have the, the precise location so you can maximize yeah. the torque. So, so those are, you know, high speed motors, uh, uh, definitely an area that is happening. This technology, and we have a new chip um, coming out, the LX34070 for motor controls, is replacing some older technology where people all had to measure absolute position, but they were using these transformer-based magnetic resolvers. And this is this is an area where clearly we're seeing a transition from those into these um, this this type of, of, of device and, and sensor that's taking advantage of these lightweight um, conditions where we just put that sensor right on the PCB board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a lot happening in the world of, of sensing at the moment. So uh Mark, I really appreciate taking the time today to talk to Design Spark and giving us a little bit of an insight into the microchip range and obviously talking to us a lot more about sensor and sensor applications. So I hope we can talk again real soon and appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you.